Well, good morning to traders the world over. It's a pleasure to be with you on this Friday, and I am thrilled to bring you trading opening ranges and explaining opening range logic with you. Now, this is definitely a session which may be new to some of you, uh, this topic, and if so, again, it's, it's, it's definitely my pleasure. However, in order to make sure you get the most from this time, uh, this, this investment of time, I want you to be comfortable asking me questions. You know, that's what I think makes this a living, breathing session and allows you to walk away really feeling like your specific questions were answered. So I do want you to be comfortable uh, asking questions. I'm going to go through the presentation. We're going to take a look at today's opening ranges in the U.S. session uh, as euro dollar sits almost near a weekly high. Uh, but uh, we are going to take a look at real-time sessions, and then we're going to address most of the questions toward the end. But uh, go ahead. Throw them in there, and we'll get to them as we can, but the majority of them will probably be done towards the end. All right, guys, let me just do a quick bit of housekeeping here. Uh, just a risk disclaimer stating that trading foreign exchange on margin does carry a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. A high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. The next slide, we are going to talk about uh, past results. And naturally, we must say past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, I'm excited to bring you guys this session specifically because opening ranges can happen on multiple time frames. Uh, so you can look at daily opening ranges, which is going to be the majority of what we discussed today. However, you can also apply this, and, and my team and I often do apply this to weekly opening ranges, monthly opening ranges, and even biannual opening ranges. Once you take the first two weeks of January and the first two weeks of July, to give you an, an overall bias for the half of the year. So again, very excited to bring this to you, especially at this time. It's specifically why I chose this topic. All right, guys, also let me make sure everybody has my contact information. If you wanna reach out to me via email, you're welcome to. Uh, you can send me an email after this session if I didn't get to your questions or if a question pops in your mind over the weekend, feel free to shoot me an email. And of course, there is my Twitter handle and I am a analyst and trading instructor with Daily FX, spending most of my time with a live trading room called Daily FX On Demand. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and, and get on with the show. We're going to go ahead and give you the overview uh, in which we're going to talk about why. Why even focus on opening ranges? What's better about the opening range than you know the, the closing or the midday or anything of that nature? Why the opening range? We're going to discuss that. Uh, we're going to discuss how it kind of came into being and how it was used at first. We're also going to talk about, and I think this is, Probably what helped me the most um, is, is when I started getting my hands dirty with opening ranges is understanding really the underlying concept of it, the psychology of trading an opening range breakout, and what that, what that really can teach you about successful trading. We're going to talk about how to calculate opening ranges. We're going to look at the majors today. Uh, we, we, we're going to give you kind of a formula, so to speak, on how to calculate it, when to get in, when to get out, when to flip. All of those, all of those things. Uh, and again, if if you feel like I skipped something, or you say, ah, but that that doesn't connect, just let me know. Feel free to ask, guys. I'd be happy to be happy to uh, to answer that. Uh, and then the there's two people who are credited with this. Uh, the original is Tony Crable. The second uh, is probably a little bit more publicized. Uh, is Mark Fisher, um, and he has five rules for trading the over the opening range break, which we're going to discuss as well. Uh, so just to give you guys kind of uh, just kind of whet the appetite, this is what it's going to look like um, in, in the sense of in the sense of what I do is I well you don't have to have a tool like this. I have an app from the FXCM App Store. Uh, it's a free app. I'll, I'll tell you that up front. Uh, but it, it highlights different trading sessions. Now anybody can do this. Just block out the sessions on their own. Uh, but this, if, if you're asking about the colors there, that's exactly what that is. And so uh, we're going to explain all of these lines, the colors, everything else. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and throw out the link to it. If, if you're an FXCM client, that's free for you. If you're not, you can use it on an FXCM demo, not a problem, or the brokerage that you're using might have something similar to that. 
Uh, but this is what it's going to look like. And believe it or not, all of these lines are going <laughs> to make sense when we're finished for today. Uh, but uh, this is what it looks like on Euro USD. What you can see here, guys, is that effectively we have an opening range breakout. And, and again, we'll explain what that means in just a moment. Uh, effectively, what that's showing us, and excuse all the, the confusion here, uh, is that we're continuing to see the dollar. And this is the Dow Jones FXCM dollar index. Uh, it, the dollar index is continuing to push lower. All right, so back to the slides so that you know exactly what those, what those crazy lines mean. Uh, I think this would be helpful. Um, if you guys are not familiar with Paul Tudor Jones, he was one of the, the heroes of Market Wizards, the Market Wizard book. He came out with a, uh, a documentary that uh, he effectively bought all the rights to because he felt like it, it showed it, – it, it shined a poor image on him effectively when trying to raise capital. A uh, PBS documentary called Trader. Uh, but all, all that to say, he wrote the forward for Mark Fisher's book uh, in which he states anyone starting out in the trading business, Mark Fisher's, with, he, it's known as the ACD system. We'll explain that in just a moment. It's effectively the opening range break. Um, proved an invaluable blueprint for trading success. He goes on to explain the reason why is because it gives you objective points of entry and objective points of exit, which allows you to enter with confidence. The fact that you know you have an edge when getting into the trade and the fact that you know when the edge is no longer playing out and it's best just to just to fold your hand, so to speak, and get out of the trade. Uh, so if you're familiar with Paul Tudor Jones, uh, hopefully that carries a lot of weight. It definitely did for me. If you're not familiar, I definitely recommend uh, you know reading Market Wizards. His his specific interview is, is valuable. If you can find the documentary uh, Trader, uh, that's, that's a fun one to watch as well, even though it, it, ha it took place in 1987. All right, so why? Why trade the breakout? Uh, the most helpful thing, again, I think is objectivity. Most traders, at least from my experience, where I sit as an instructor and an analyst from Daily FX, most traders do not have a specific point of reference as to where their edge really begins and where their edge dissipates. And, and I hope that makes sense because effectively what we're, what we're wanting to grasp is the fact that Listen, net net, in the end, we really do not know where price will close tomorrow. We can look at an uptrend and say, well, the odds are that it will move higher. We can see a downtrend and think, well, the odds are it will move lower. But a lot of traders do not have in and of themselves an objective point of reference. As we explain the opening session breakout and the opening session levels, you'll be able to grasp a firm, a firm point of reference. And, and again, this will apply not only to the daily opening range but the weekly and the monthly as well. Another thing, and again, it's, it's, it's to that first point, but it's very important. It's important to know when your idea is wrong, right, and where it's wrong. Um, the, the, the concept that I like to think about is do you care more about being right, i.e. closing out a trade that's not in the red, or do you care more about making money? That's, that's often as simple as that sounds. That's usually the biggest chasm that, that, that most traders have to cross. Uh, before they become successful. In fact, many years ago, um, you know, when I was getting started, I ran an analytical rundown on a year's worth of trading results, and I was flat effectively on the year in my account equity. But I was right 63.7% of the time, and, and that told me something very important. I was holding on to large losing trades or trades that were larger losers than they should have been for hoping of being right. So I'll tell you what, I, I saw that number – and it actually put a pit in the bottom of my stomach. And the reason why is because, yeah, I was right more than half of the time, but my time was wasted because my account was effectively flat. Um, so, so since seeing that, that's really given me, really given me a, a a foreknowledge to say, listen, I don't really care about that number, right? Emotionally, from an ego standpoint, a lot of traders really care about that number. What's their win percentage? But when you go down to it and say, well, what's going to make me money? It can be having a 30% win rate, right? But getting out quickly. In fact, not to not to beat the market wizard's drum too much. There's another another quote in that book that I love. Um, and if you guys are just joining us, I'm seeing people coming in the room all the time, which is great. So welcome. Uh, if you guys are new, we're just getting started. Uh, but in talking about this, knowing when and where your idea is wrong, uh, there's one great quote uh, where one market wizard, Bruce Kovner, is quoting one of the others. And he says, listen, great trading comes down to this, trading your best idea, being wrong, trading your second best idea, being wrong again, trading your third best idea, and then tripling your money. 
and, and that's not a guarantee or anything of that nature. But I think it just goes on to state that, listen, you've got to be comfortable saying, okay, this is my idea. This is where I'm wrong. I get out if I'm wrong, right? I don't hold on to the trade just for hoping, just for hope's sake that it comes back even. Uh, and, and in fact, one quote that uh, it's also from that, forgive me, guys, uh, is is that the, I'll, the the idea that I'll close out at break even is a rallying cry, is a rallying cry, effectively, of, uh, of of many losing traders. So um, probably spent too much time on that, but it's important to know when and where your idea is wrong. If you're trading against your reference points, it's effectively like playing tug of war with a gorilla, right? You have no chance, uh, at least from a long term standpoint. Of course, opening range breakouts allows you to filter price through news cleanly. And what I mean by that is we're going to use something that I'll tell you was new to me when when I first came upon the system, which is really putting an emphasis on time, time and price. And, and specifically, we're not talking about GAN or anything like that, but specifically how much time is a price held. Because if you get a wick – like we had 39.92 on May 8th with Euro USD. I know I'm going out a bit here, but this price did not hold time very long. And so we're actually going to talk about that. That it doesn't hold time very long. Here's the antithesis of that down at 35 on June 5th, right? So if if, if time does not hold that price very long, then it effectively means the market's rejecting it. And we're actually going to take that on a micro scope. And I think that's a that's a that's a helpful objective filter and then we're also going to look at volatility and how volatility plays a fact and that also i think helps you filter price through some of those news spikes which is effectively what we had on both of those euro dollar spikes all right so the key points of opening range naturally what we're really doing and i think this is helpful because regardless of where you are in the world if, if you're in sydney if you're in hong kong wherever you are you can apply this to the opening range of the market you trade or the main currency you're trading so if you're a pound yen trader you could effectively use this in the asian session the the london open uh and and the u.s open if you wanted to just because there's there's volume and volatility at the beginning of the u.s session not so much of course in the afternoon session if you're a dollar swiss trader for an example and you want to trade opening range breakout well then please note you can leave the asian session alone right you probably already do uh day joe good to see you my friend uh but but all that to say, it's it's important to note that we're going to look at different time zones. Um, I'll, I'll say the ones, just because I'm based in the United States, ones I focus on the most and trade the most is the London Open and the U.S. Open. All right. The opening range does give you a crossover point where your idea is wrong. We'll, we'll tell you exactly how to filter that. It's, it's effectively, um, not to give you the punchline up front, but it's effectively the other side of the opening range. So if you get an opening range breakout to the top side, and I know I haven't explained this chart very well yet, but when I have these black lines here as the opening range, right, and this green line is the opening range breakout, which I'll explain how you get that in a second. You can actually see kind of tipping my hat down here. Uh, and, and then this is the invalidation point or the flipping point uh, down here around 36.08. Uh, but all that to say, you, you – receive a very important crossover point, and that's helpful as well. Uh, another nice thing is that when you set these volatility filters, which we'll explain this in just a moment, but it's 10% it's of the ATR is, is what's used most commonly. When you use those levels, it, it allows you to say, okay, listen, if you get an opening range breakout, but, but it fails, right? And then you start to trade on the other side of the opening range. So we did not get the scenario, but just as an example, Let's say we got this, we tried to punch here, right? And then you move through the other side of the range. That would show this is an opening range failure, right? We did not get that, but sometimes you'll see that. And I think some of the other currencies, uh, the crosses might even have that. And we'll take a look at that there. Um, here's an example. This is dollar yen. Uh, and, and I just have the opening range levels which is a high and low of the first 30 minutes. Dan will explain that in just a moment. Uh, and then we'll talk about the volatility filters, which are effectively right above the London high, right around 101.45. So this would be considered, if we don't get a move above that volatility filter, a failed breakout, especially if we push down here. If it just moves sideways, then guys, guess what? It wasn't worth you paying the spread in the first place. And that's, I think, a helpful thing as well, is, is that it helps you see, okay, is, is there volatility worth trading? 
Like if I go back and you look at this opening range, the Asian session of dollar yen, last night you can see we started the session around 101.70, 101.66 specifically, and then we ended the session, at least the Asian session, about 20 pips lower, right? So from a short-term basis, it's a very helpful approach to have. All right, going back here, we are going to apply time to it, but really what you're looking at, just as an example, if you have a 30-minute opening range, which is what I most commonly use. Other traders will use a 20-minute or an hour. Uh, 30 minutes is what I'm most comfortable with and what I've used. If I use a 30-minute opening range, effectively what you're wanting to see is does, does price hold above an opening range break for a percentage of the opening range time? And that might sound a little esoteric, but effectively if you're looking at a 30-minute range – and you get a breakout, you want to see, are we getting a candle or two or three above that opening range to effectively validate that breakout? Or is it going to be a wick that gets rejected? All right, so that's why that's how a key a point is applied to time. But we are going to look at failed breakouts, which is the reverse of that. Effectively, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, what I want to see, and, and great question, uh, Boyke, we'll, we'll, we'll address that in just a moment. FX Boyke says, why 10%? Great question. Great question. We'll address that in just a moment. Uh, failed breakouts, it's the antithesis of uh, a time validation, meaning time could not hold that price. Right. So we looked at the big example of euro dollar on May 8th and June 5th, right, where you had a wick up to 39.92 and a wick down to 35 of three. Time could not hold those prices. Uh, it, it, and so that would be known as a failed breakout. And, and that's that's another way to say, OK. If you get that, you can put a stop above there on a minor scale, and it could be a very clean risk-reward trade. Obviously, this goes to the point, this confidence in a trade setup goes up to what Paul Tudor Jones spoke to a little bit earlier, uh, and that it gives you a great objective system. The reason why, uh, the reason why confidence, I think, is provided with this type of trading setup is because of the objectiveness. You know exactly where you're wrong. Right, and, and and hopefully you don't care about win percentage, uh, because again, as I mentioned with my personal story, that was a false confidence for me at the beginning. And of course, it can be applied across time frames. All right, so let me give you one more thing, and then we're actually going to get into the calculation of it. Um, so uh, one of my colleagues, Jamie Sattel, wrote a great article on this as well. Uh, so I just want to provide that link for you if you want to read that. And then the opening range methodology, effectively, that, that I'm teaching it as, uh, majority of it is a combination. Let me go ahead and just throw the link in for you guys. Uh, you know what? That's not a clean link. Let me get you a better one. So in the, in the chat to all, that second link is a little bit cleaner for you guys, uh, the daily FX link uh, from Jamie. Uh, but there's really a couple of ways to get more if you guys want more after this. Tony Crable is really kind of the godfather of it. His book's like 500 bucks, I think, if you can find it. Um, Mark Fisher has the Logical Trader book, and that's, that's really what we're going to be focusing on today. All right, I'm going to skip past this slide, and I'll just give you the, the gist of it. One of our analysts, Christian Kerr, talked about the opening range volatility towards the beginning of the year in January. And again, this plays out throughout. But quite simply, the, the key thing I just want to share with you real quick, I'm not going to spend as much time as I wanted to, uh, but is that there's a lot of angst around the beginning of the year as money managers, big and small, do not want to miss out on the first clear directional move of the year and start off lagging their respective benchmarks. The psychology in the first month of the calendar year is not unlike the psychology we used to witness in pit traded markets the open when there would be a few false starts in the first hour of trading, leaving a defined range. The break of this range, or what market veterans would refer to as the opening range breakout, would usually lead to the first real directional move of the day, and, and that's really what we're looking at. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the first three key points. Uh, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll actually go back to this to this slide uh, in, in a moment. But here's what we're looking at, guys. So what I do specifically, and again, I have Euro USD, and I'm using five-minute charts for what it's worth. I'm using five-minute charts, and, and effectively what I'm looking at is the first 30 minutes, so the first – five candles, right? So 8.05 to 8.10 to 8.15 to 8.20 to 8.25. Um, and and then that, the end of that takes us into 8.30. Uh, so what you can see here is on Euro USD, I've marked the low 
in the high. Now, just for what it's worth, one thing that was discovered or that was talked about when when doing some back testing was that across multiple markets, you would often see the opening range mark the high or low for the session about 35% of the time. That's statistically significant, right? So, so I mentioned why do we want to look at the opening range? Well, effectively, it's 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 bigger than random, right? I think Christian's comment, and if you're not familiar with Christian Kerr's work, I uh, definitely recommend that you do become familiar with it. Uh, but the idea is that that happens more than it's random, and because that's the case, that gives you an edge if you can identify that breakout. So, again, what I do is if I'm trading a – Western Hemisphere currency, right? Then I'll look to the London or the U.S. opening range. If I'm if I'm trading a Asia Pac currency, right? It'll usually be uh, the Sydney or Asian open. And again, I have these marked here. They're color blocked, and, and that's just a that's just a tool I have. You can go ahead and and and, and block them off yourself, and effectively look for the first thirty minutes. Uh, but here you go, and, and this is what I think is helpful to keep an eye on. As a trading system, again, happens about 30%, 35%, I think was the specific number that he gave of the time. So, of course, like anything else, right, expect to be stopped out. But if you have those objective levels, which are very helpful. So this is the opening range on EURUSD starting with the New York session, which is this red overlay. Uh, this green box shows that we're still – London's still trading, uh, and that's what that's showing. So you have an overlap of Asia into London, London into U.S., and we're now in the U.S. So looking at the U.S. opening range – for Euro USD, you can see that we hit the low of the day so far at 36.12. Within the first 30 minutes, the high of the day was 36.23. Right, so we have this 11 pip opening range. However, that's not enough for us. So the question, the excellent question we got earlier, is why 10%? Well, effectively, what we're doing is we're looking for a volatility filter, right? To Christian's point, what Christian was mentioning in that is that you often got a few false breaks. And so what we're doing is we're effectively saying, okay, what I would like to see, what I would like to see is a defined break. Sure, you could get in earlier. You could just use opening ranges, but the breakout really does need to include a volatility filter to make sure that a news event, whatever that may be, and as you can imagine, the news often comes out towards the opening range. Right, so those 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 news prints, like we had that horrible GDP revision in the U.S. earlier this week, normally comes out around this time of day and, and can either validate or invalidate the opening range break, and, and that's important either way. Uh, so what I've done is I've just marked the first 30 minutes with these black horizontal lines. What I've then done, I'm actually going to highlight it like this, and I'm going to take off. The session indicator that was the color block. So you can see here, I have highlighted that opening range. And then what I did is I took 10% of the daily ATR, the average true range. So quite simply, all I'm doing here, all I'm doing here is saying, okay, whatever the daily ATR is, give me 10% of that. Now, as we know, uh, in fact, if you look at the long term, right, this has dropped precipitously over the last handful of years, right? I mean, you can see here, this is just a line chart of ATR, right? Back in the, we never thought 2011 would have been the good old days, but you know, that you had some of the Eurozone crisis, all that to say, uh, I say that to say this, volatility is low. So this adjusts to the market, right? Because an opening range breakout in 2011, when you were getting some 200, you know, pip swings in a day, it's much different when you have a 50 pip ATR. So what I'm doing here is, is setting a 10% of the daily ATR. The ATR is 50 pips, 10% is 5 pips, above the opening range. So step one, identify the opening range. Step two, identify above and below the opening range a volatility filter. And you can see what I have here against this low that we've talked about, right? So, so pretty firm support down here. This wick low in which we mentioned price and time did not hold. We've just been moving steadily to the upside, right? So we got an opening range break. I've set my volatility filters, and now what we're looking for is time spent above the volatility filter. 
if we broke to the downside, let's take a look at some other currencies. All right, so you can see this is dollar CAD, a very strong CAD of light. This is a wide opening range here. And again, you can see that first print, and this isn't always the case, and I don't want to mislead anybody because we're traders, right? We're just looking at probabilities while managing risk. That's all we're doing. But what we see here is that the first five minutes so far of dollar CAD printed the high, and we've been moving to the bottom right since then. So let me take this off. I'm going to go ahead and take off again the color blocks here. And 8 a.m. Eastern is, a, is effectively what we're using, right? So that's the high. And then really within 20 minutes, we hit the low. So that's the opening range. You have the volatility set fil the volatility filter set here, three pips above and below. And now we're looking for a break with time above. Now, naturally, guys, if 3% is 10% of the ATR, well, then you know that 30 pips is the daily ATR. So as strong as that trend is, just be careful because if we've already covered – and I'll tell you, when, when discussing – which factors effectively work best, uh, what a lot of opening range traders will tell you is I prefer the more volatile markets, right? So give me give me a, a sterling yen or, or give me um, a euro yen or something of that nature over a dollar pad. And the reason why is because just for what it's worth, uh, and, and please understand this, you know, I don't I don't get paid for you to take a trade. I, I, I want you to be a successful and confident trader while managing your risk, limiting your downside. Uh, we've covered a little over 30%, probably about 33% of the day's range, right? So effectively what that means is that if we've covered 33% of the day's range in the opening range, we're adding another 10% for volatility filter breakout. This is more of a teaching opportunity than a trading opportunity, if you will. And what I mean by that, guys, is that quite simply, the volatility is so low, especially on dollar CAD, um, that it's going to be hard to get too much runaway from that opening range breakout. Right, net net, you definitely would like to see a more volatile market. We're traders; we'd all like to see more volatile market opportunity. Opportunity exists within volatility. Uh, of course, there's opportunity within non-volatile markets as well, in these kind of clean, slow, yielding trends like Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar. Uh, but uh, all that to say, I'd be careful on just blindly saying this is the one I'm going to do an open range breakout on because. All things considered, a volatility would be a little bit more preferable. And speaking of volatility, here's sterling yen. And really, this is one that you can see applied on multiple markets. Now, I've used the U.S. session, but naturally, sterling yen works very well in the Asian Open as well as the London Open. Uh, so just take a look at a couple of these. This is last night's Asian Open. Again, not trying to pull anything over you, but a statistically significant amount of time, the high for the day is posted during the opening range. And when I say statistically significant, effectively just meaning more than you would see in a random event. So we take the first 30 minutes, high, low. And in fact, let's just go ahead and we'll just start from scratch. I'm going to take off these lines here, or I'll just move them up, I should say. So this is the opening range of Asia. And again, if we're just trading here and we don't know what the next print's going to be, well, then naturally what we want to say is, okay, what's 10% of the ATR, right? Okay, for pound yen, it's a paltry, relatively speaking, eight pips, right? So if the high is 173.11, then we know 173.19 effectively is going to be the opening range break. And, and I like to color code it, just makes it a little bit easier. The downside break, eight pips from the low, right? So 73.01, go ahead and find 72.93. And let me give you the specific terminology. I, I think that would be helpful because you could just know here that, excuse me, you could just know here 
that we have very simply a opening range break to the downside. Uh, but I don't think that's enough. I think I think it's helpful to know uh, the specific terminology, and so that's what I want to go over with you now. Um, if this helps you, use it. If it doesn't, don't. Uh, the, the, the traditional terminology that's used is when we're in the opening range, you set both of these, not knowing, of course, which one's going to hit. So what these traditionally are known as either an A down or an A up, right? Because, again, you don't know. When we're in the opening range, excuse me, the volatility filter is where those go. When one gets triggered and you have time sitting well below that price, so you, you touch it, you touch it again, and then we get the breakout. So here we would mark this as an A down, and this would now be called a C up. And I'll tell you, you can decide based on your risk parameters – Quite simply, if you want your stop to be at C or if you want it to be what was known as D, the other side of the breakout. So if the OR break was to the downside, then the opposite side of the OR would be to the top, right? So the top of the opening range. So you can use one of these two levels here as your stop on the move to the downside. Of course, if you want to limit risk, you can continue to go ahead and trail your stop. It's completely up to you, completely up to you. But that's just an example with Sterling Yen on last night's Asian session. Right now, another thing I'd like to share with you guys. So we talked about terminology. We've talked about setting the opening range and finding those levels is looking for technical patterns that favor opening range breakouts. So if you're somebody who likes to go and, and kind of take a top-down approach, one thing that a lot of traders really like to do is find something like an inside day, right? Something that, that, that shows you prices are coiling up. Um, a, a triangle pattern, if you're a fan of Elliott Wave, right? Uh, this isn't a chart that I already have drawn up. Let me see if I can just kind of do this in real time if you don't mind. Um, Sterling Key, right? Very volatile pair, so to speak, all things considered. Um, had a bearish outside day here. It's a four-hour chart. Uh, you can see this four-hour chart, though, shows you the triangle, which is, which is effectively what I wanted to show you. Uh, you have a bearish outside day, so that gives you the overall bias, right? A bearish outside day then turns the folks to the downside. For what this is worth, if we close within these realms here, it's an inside day. So that technical pattern would favor the next opening range break, excuse me, right? Because if you're comfortable or you're familiar with that type of pattern, it effectively means there's indecision and the next move could be a more significant one. Uh, Murtaza, great question. Um, Murtaza says, has anyone attempted to automate the strategy? Well, what I think might be helpful to note um, and, and as far as I understand, yes, uh, I have not spoken to anybody who has, uh, but Mark Fisher, who's more than happy to share this strategy. In, in fact, in his words, the more people that know it, the better the strategy works, uh, held a prop trading desk with 75 traders that, that use this strategy across different markets. So for that, that might be a, a helpful tidbit, so to speak, um, is that this, is, this has been a prop trading strategy used. Um, and again, definitely works better in more volatile markets, uh, but I, I still think it can work well selectively chosen even in today's market. Uh, again, when I say selectively chosen, effectively what I'm saying is uh, dollar CAD, which did just punch a new low, be careful with, right? Because quite simply, the volatility is, is, is quite low. All right, so here's dollar yen, and it looks like we're just getting another push lower in the breakout, just for what it's worth. A little analytical note here, we did just drop below or we're, standing, we're effectively continuing to print below the low past the FOMC. So it looks like there's some more uh, dollar pain in store, so to speak. All right, so this is cable. And this is an interesting one here as well, because what you have here is the opening range highlighted in black, right? So here you have an A up, or excuse me, an A down, six pips away from the opening range low. And here you have an A up. Again, what validates that is if we get time above or below that level. 
Now, one trader might say, well, I'm still on an A down from the London opening range break, right, which started right here. So this is the London opening range break. We effectively just kind of moved sideways and then finally broke the downside. So somebody who's trading the U.S. session might have a different view than the London session trader or even the Asian session trader, right, who's already gotten taken out of this trade, right, hopefully, hopefully at a profitable stop because you got an opening range break to the top side here and then moved back down. But this is cable, and what I want to show you here is that you got one candle below and then a very bullish candle to the upside. So effectively what you're seeing there is an overall rejection of this cable opening range to the downside. So we tested it to the downside, and effectively what I showed here is this is the opening range, six pips below the opening range. So from 70.15 to 70.09, we tested it and we failed. Right, So if we break this level, that, if anything, signifies this level even more, even more. Um, Joe says, in my opinion, London sets the trend for the day. New York takes it over to the next level. Since New York is better, as trend is set. More liquidity is available for a true breakout. I, I appreciate that opinion very much, buddy. I really do. And so thank you for voicing that. Um, I, you know, and, and I would say that can be your edge. That can be your bias. If you prefer to trade the opening range of New York, with what's known from Tony Crable's point of view as an opening range breakout preference, <laughs> an ORBP, an opening range breakout preference, you can do that in, in which you use either Asia or London to validate or to only say, listen, I only want to take the trade in the direction of the prior breakout. Does that make sense? Uh, because I think that can be a, a helpful edge. Uh, it's something that, that traders will use as well. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, a up is not the opening range high. I think I just went straight to a line in my in my eyes. But so this is the opening range high. This is the opening range low. We are sitting near these levels, but again, the breakout is down here. And it's not until we have time plus price above one of these levels that 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 we are confirming which one is the breakout, which one earns the breakout. So if we get a dollar yen, let's go back to dollar yen. This is the opening range. For dollar yen, the first 30 minutes of price action. The 10% 10, 10 of the ATR on the day is four pips. So we can just do this in real time, right? The opening range high was at 109, I'm sorry, 101.39. Then 101.43 is going to be the A up. The low appreciate your patience, I have to count it out real quick. Is that one oh one thirty five? So you can see a very small four pip opening range. But that's gonna have one oh one thirty one as the A down. Now another thing that for what it's worth, I think it's helpful, is you'd be surprised how often the A up or A down sits right near a prior key level, right? And so if anything, that can just help add to the confidence of that trade. And effectively, again, when I say confidence, I'm meaning this is the point that I get out if it's no longer working for me. Uh, so good question here. Exiting strategies, right? Uh, a lot of traders will effectively just ride it out to the end of the session with the stop move to break even as soon as they have a confirmed breakout, right? Some other strategies that I think can, can be used very well, uh, price action pivots, daily pivots. So naturally daily pivots, and I believe that's what I had. These might be weekly pivots, excuse me. So this is a daily pivot, starting, of course, in the Sydney Open into the U.S. close. In fact, let's just go ahead and show that. I think, I think by default, most of these are set to – this one is daily. So uh, effectively, what you could be looking at here, this is the opening range. If you got a push up to there, 
but that could be a take your money and run type level. Right. So that's when I say pivots, daily pivots, that's that's effectively what I'm looking at. A breakout into one of the resistance levels of the upside. So if you get an opening range breakout or an A up, you can take it to R1, a strong move, R2, right? And effectively those are usually kind of catch price. A breakout to the downside, you can see here, we've been kind of sitting around this S2 on dollar yen. And it's and, and what's I, I would tell you would have me concerned about taking this trade is the fact that the opening range break is right near the S2. So you could get an overthrow, but to me, that's just a lower probability opportunity. Now, what's been most favorable from my, from my manual backtesting is quite simply an end of day exit or an end of session exit. Um, and in effect, what you're doing is you're just letting it play out. You're letting it, if you get an opening range break to the upside and A up, Right then, then quite simply, that would that would just favor holding on to the end of the session, closing out then. Um, if you get an A down, closing at the end of the session. Uh, and, and in fact, you're just trying to squeeze it for all it's worth. Now, earlier I mentioned quite simply that opening range can teach you something about successful trading, and, and we're about to get to Q and A. So uh, let me get to this point, if, if if you will, and then we'll we'll address some of your questions. So if you guys want to start throwing them in now, uh, feel free to. But. Naturally, if you're if you're a professional trader, if you're trading at a bank, whatever you're doing, you know that you cannot hold on to a losing trade, right? Your ego has no place in the trading ring, and, and that's why I think so many people have a tough time trading. It goes to that point I made earlier. More people really would prefer to be right from an emotional standpoint than to make money, and, and in the end, your emotions will often win out. Uh, so, what you often see is that there's almost this this aggressive rush in more volatile markets to not be on the wrong side of the trade from institutions. So they're fine if they have a low win percentage, right? And so with that, quite simply, it, you'll often see, and when I, when I say it can teach you a lot about successful trading, effectively what you're looking at is the fact that, listen, if this thing breaks to the upside, right? A lot of people, are a lot of people who are short are just going to get out, right? Or flip because it's not worth holding onto the trade, right? They, they, in, in the end, bait traders have, a desk manager, and, and she's standing over the shoulder saying, listen, if you lose more than 1% of your capital, you know, the box is over there. Pack up your stuff. Uh, so very, very important. Very, very important. All right. So th those are a few of the exits. Naturally, you could do a risk-reward bias. Um, in terms of FIBs, you can use uh, FIBOs from larger ranges. That's another way to do it. Uh, a, a good question here, uh, and this is something that I've seen used before, um, asks about, exiting within a daily range and 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 specifically what i've seen used well or i, I should say the most successful approach i've seen with this um and, and again this isn't a definitive answer it's just from personal experience is quite simply that if you take the atr so let's say the atr is 50 pips right and we're looking at euro usd and the overnight low let me just pull up the chart real quick so I can explain this with, with an actual chart. The ATR is 50 pips, and this is the overnight low. Then projecting it from, from 50 pips from that overnight low. Um, and, and so it's just effectively saying, okay, if this is the ATR, if you wanted to use you know, two-thirds of the ATR um, from that overnight low can be a clean, a clean way to play it. Right? So effectively, this works best in a strong trend. Right? And you can see that uh, that failure on cable uh, is, is starting to show through. So again, going to focus on the 70-30, 7.35. But just as an example, 60 pips is the ATR, right, for cable. 60 pips is the ATR for Kiwi, right? So effectively, if you, if you have an opening range breakout, and let's say, as an example, you're trading U.S. Open. Well, then what you could say is, all right, well, you've got an opening range breakout. I know at the very least, not sure if I'll get it, the ATR is 60 pips. Then what I'll do is if this thing cracks the ATR to the upside, which doesn't look probable, then I'll get out there, which would take us into 88.10, so in the 88-plus region. Now, we are facing an opening range breakout. You can see the, the, the range has been pretty tight here. I have an opening uh, an A down and an A up, which is yet to be touched on Aussie dollar. 
looks like we got potentially a failure. Actually, no, I would I would count that just because you can see we got a break there, a couple of we had three full candles there, and then a move down. So I would still count this as an A down. And then from a terminology point of view, C up, meaning that quite simply what some traders will do, if this is the opening range high, right, the place to stop there. If you get a break above the C up, that would be their flip. So let's say you went short here, stopped here, and then if you get a break here, that would be the flip, right? And then quite simply, the stop on this move is usually the opposite of the opening range. So again, it's using the opening range to specifically for your objective points of reference. So uh, let me close out with this. The rules that Mark Fisher effectively stated in his book, and again, he, he he's a fan of everybody knowing this, but is that you know you need to plot your reference points, right? So opening range and then the high and low are the the breakout points. Lean against these points to execute your trades, right? When you have a strong trend and you have a breakout in the direction of that strong trend, that can be time to maximize your size. If not, you know, don't. Right? At all times, minimize your risk. It's important to know when you're getting out if you're wrong. Right? That's that's what we opened up the session with. It gives you objective points to help you get out when you're wrong. And quite simply, if you know that, then you can trade with confidence. A few final thoughts here, guys. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, but the question is, why is there a C point? It, it's so that effectively you can flip if necessary. Right, because again, we want to have a fluid concept, and we want to have a fluid mentality of what price action can do, because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We effectively are saying, listen, we're looking for an edge that opening range breakout a, a statistically significant amount of the time will mark the higher low. But if we get a breakout to the other side, let me go back to that Aussie dollar chart we were looking at earlier. So this is a breakdown, right? We have time and price holding below the opening range to the downside. So my bias right now is to the downside on Aussie dollar based on this move. Right, even from this opening, you can see we got this push here, a five wave move here, and now we're starting to move down. We break below the day's low, right? That would just confirm it. But right now we've seen an opening range break. So today we have an A down for the US session, just the US session. The opening range high is where a stop could be placed. So you get stopped out here. And then if you get a breakout to the upside, and so I appreciate you asking the question, which would be again a C up and time holds that price, that could be an opportunity to go along with the C down there or with the stop down here below the opening ring. If you get stopped on that, listen, it's just a bad day. Mark Fisher calls that an F point because the market's giving you your finger, right? You shouldn't, you should it was just a bad day, right? So all, all that to say, the bias is to the downside because of that, the C point is effectively a, a, a flip reference. So I hope that clarifies. Um, and, and I'll tell you naturally again, um, uh, as, as I put up the final thoughts here, and again, guys, it was great being with you. I, I, I appreciate everybody's time here. Love the questions. Those questions were great. Uh, but what I think is important is is this this breathes with volatility, right? So if volatility just starts to crank up, right, you're going to expect and you're going to effectively have wider stops. You're going to have wider profit targets. As volatility creeps down like we have now, they're going to be a little bit tighter. So now on average when I use this system, I'm, I'm really going for about 20 25, 30 pips, so about half to a little bit greater than the daily ATR. Um, it, in times past, it's been 75, right, in more volatile periods uh, of recent history. So it breathes with the market. You know, it's a volatility-based system on firm reference points. Um, so I think that's a helpful note as well. Uh, lastly, guys, opening ranges can help bring you can help bring time into your trade, which again, what you're effectively doing is looking to validate, is this a clean level or is the market rejecting it? Because that's an important question. If it is rejecting it, that can be a flip opportunity to put a stop above there and fade if you start to get opening range breakup against that wick, against that big price. Um, and of course, guys, this is last point here. It's, it's just a key trading point. It, even if after this session you think, ah, this isn't for me, it's always important to know and define the worst case scenario. Right, I, I think that's a very helpful part of trading is quite simply, if you know the worst thing that can happen and you're prepared for it, then you're ahead of a majority of traders out there. Right, Most of the traders have a, this one has to be a winner type of mindset, and they don't define their worst case scenario. Right, They don't have that upfront discipline to follow it. So um, 
I've, I think I've overstayed my welcome because we're 50 minutes past the hour, but I want to thank everybody here. Uh, you guys are absolutely a great, great audience. I look forward to more of these sessions in the future. Again, if you have questions, you're welcome. You're absolutely welcome to reach out to me. You can shoot me an email. And naturally, you can hit me up on Twitter as well. Uh, to those of you who have asked about the volatility, you can go to different pairs. Naturally, there, and it, it always applies the same, right? That's what I like about this system is that you've got opening ranges, the, the high and low. You've got a percentage of ATR. So if you're trading dollar peso, a dollar rand, be careful, right? Because usually there's less liquidity providers and the wicks are a little bit greater. But it, it all comes down to, listen, I'm looking for an edge with a, with a disciplined approach. And that's exactly what it brings you exactly what it brings you so if you want to trade a more volatile pair you know i trade sterling kiwi right i, I look for patterns and, and, and have tight risk and know that should that break down usually it's going to cover those those previous small losses uh and that's how it plays out so all that to say uh you can look for those volatile pairs if you want but again apply the rules right have those well-defined well-defined risks uh john uh, i'll do it when i close the <laughs> when i close the webinar john said Tyler, did you take a breath during this webinar? I didn't feel like it, <laughs> but you guys were worth it. You guys were great. Have an excellent, excellent weekend. Um, you guys are you guys are absolutely wonderful. Uh, thank you to FX Street. Now I can't wait to be with you guys back in July. Happy trading, guys. See you soon.